everybody thanks for visiting my channel uh, this video is about free code camps arithmetic formatter project within their scientific computing with Python section uh, I was able to complete it it was very difficult I'm not sure how this project is for for beginners uh, but it is I should have took a hint when a fellow coder who's been coding for six years took three hours to complete it uh, but I was determined and persevered and was able to get it to pass. In the process of that, I created a blog documenting my journey through the challenge. Uh, so I would love for you to come over and visit my blog. It's in the link in the des description box below. Um, I'd also love to hear from you if you've completed the challenge yourself, uh, what you found difficult about it, uh, what you learned from it that would be great. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the code, what I wrote, why I wrote it, uh, my thoughts on it, what I found very difficult, how I overcame those difficulties. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Hey there! If you made it this far and enjoy what you're seeing, why not subscribe? I upload fresh content all the time. Thanks for watching! Yeah, so I recorded this whole entire thing for 15 minutes and did not realize that I actually wasn't recording any audio. So here I go again. Not that I had to tell you this, but I kind of had to because I can't believe I just wasted all that talking. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Here is Free Code Camp's Arithmetic Formatter. It is creating a function that receives a list of strings that are arithmetic problems and returns the problems arranged vertically and side by side. If you're not familiar with this challenge, um, I'm going to cover that up because I'm going to talk about it later. Um, what it's asking you to do is create a function that looks like this. Um, you're you're going to take a line of um, strings. Let's see, it looks going to look like this and it's gonna output this. So in my directions, these are notes that I took at the very beginning of what I wanted to do for this project and I had a lot of grandiose ideas of how this was going to work and they were extremely grandiose. None of them worked. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I put a lot of work into this only to have it fail so hard. Um, but I kind of wanted to go over where my head was at in the beginning and then how it progressed into the final place I ended up. So I'm covering this up because I'm going to talk about it a little bit of a at a time and I don't want to get ahead of myself. So I've seen other people do this and I had the same idea as well which was to create lists. So what I wanted to do was skip every other line in the string, make that the first row or line one list, and then take the second part of every other string, make it the second line. Um, right here, split into two lists for each line. Excuse me, uh, I just had breakfast. Um, find the max length of each for spacing, which would be this is the max length, this is the max length, and then you'd have to add two because you have the operator right here and a space. And then I would be formatting the line and I'd be done. <laughs> I thought it was going to be so easy and I was so wrong. Uh, okay, so I'll get a little forward or skip a little ahead in the story. Um, actually, when I wound up on Free Code Camp's forum, that's how desperate I got. I went to their forum and looked up other users and how, what they were going through with this arithmetic formatter and wow there were uh, quite a few people who just could not get it and that's kind of where I was I was so desperate I had spent so much time on this and I was at a complete loss many many times so at that point I had gotten so desperate I went over to the forum I was trying not to get as much help as I could I wanted to really do it on my own but it was interesting to see how many other people had problems with this like I did. So it was comforting. 
Um, and there were helpful people on there uh, who had overcame those difficult difficulties. So that was nice. Okay. Anyway, back to it. So line two, um, the next one would be to obviously create the operators that were going to go before each element in the second line. So I created a list. So there was going to be three separate lists, uh, first row operator, second row, and then, um, then I would zip now zip them together. So I would multiply the spaces, um, multiply the number of spaces and then zip them together with each line so that I actually had a list. I don't know where that file is right now, but I created a list where each element had the spaces put in next to the number. And then I was just going to print it out. Bada boom, bada bing. But no, it was not, it was not good. And so anyway, line three, obviously formatting the dash line with the correct number of dashes per problem was going to be super easy. Uh, no, it was not. And then line four, format each solution four spaces apart, aligned right, just like line one, and bang, I would be done. Okay, so here it is. This is what it's looking for. Actually, it's not. Let me go back and say that. What it's actually looking for, for the first four problems, I want to say, maybe even first eight problems, it's not looking for the solution. It's only looking for this that was hard for me to wrap my head around because I couldn't understand why it was failing while I had the solutions put in it it wasn't asking for the solutions in the first eight problems so here I was thinking oh, I got this right why isn't this passing okay the okay so here were the spaces I, I have a lot of hashtag notes or I did as I was doing this um, with all the spacing and calculating anyway. So after I wrote all the code, it was like 180 something lines of code, which is pretty crazy considering at the very end of all this, when I finally got it to pass, my code was literally half of that. So I had a lot of reiterating going on, which I thought at the time wasn't a big deal, but it just turned out to be redundant and, un and unnecessary. So I saved my error handling um, or error protocol till the end, which wasn't a bad thing. Um, it, it worked out. So it was just a matter of finding out where to put them, which ended up not being tricky. Again, these are my notes from the very beginning um, that actually evolved quite a bit by the end so here were my errors I got all those done I was good to go I had my 185 lines of code was ready to test now I did not test this out as I went along I ran the code in PyCharm um, and it was coming out great the output was coming out great but I didn't actually run it in Replit which was a big mistake looking back um, so I eventually downloaded the entire file from the replit and started running it off the main like it was supposed to. And this is where we get this. So it's actually running the pie test. And so that started me on a whole new trajectory, which was revolutionary, actually. Um, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself. So anyway, so here's the time that I took and it was, I really was, I was so nervous because it took me so long to write it. And then here we go. Fail, 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 fail. Um, the thing was, because I didn't run it beforehand, I didn't know what the test parameters were. So I wasn't, I didn't know how it was testing me, which was again, looking back, not a very smart move on my part. So here is the actual code that I wrote that worked and passed. Um, you can see here, it's all 10 have passed. Uh, my errors were originally put up at the top, but I had to really wrestle with this. For some odd reason, it would not allow the and. So if I put if y index zero is digit is false and y index two is digit is false, then return this error. It wouldn't work for me for some odd reason. So I had to split them up. That took a while to figure out, but I split them up. Um, not everybody obviously does it this way. There are quite a few variations in the code using lists. 
Um, that was my first go-to, but it ended up not being uh, efficient enough, I guess, maybe for me. Um, it took me a while to figure out the second argument that needed to pass in here in order to just supply the results for two of, um, for so all eight that need to come through without the solution in order to pass, and then two at the end with the second argument will pass in the results at the bottom and then it passes. Anyway, um, so ultimately what you're doing or what I did anyway with this is you're breaking it down into three different categories. Whether or not index zero, which is the first line, is less than equal to or greater than. That is the basis of at least my code. There, they're really, for me, like I said, I could have put them in lists, but it was just easier to take this three-pronged route, I guess you could say, of the, the bigger number, the smaller number, and getting the spacing right. Um, and then, and then you would just add them together and then you can see each at the end of each line has four spaces. You can see the four spaces. The very last line does not have four spaces. So the R strip actually worked really well. And then when the second argument is passed in, then if, if that's there, then the dashes, um, have to come in. Um, for the solutions. So then you're adding the top bottom dashes and then the solutions right here. So that's really just the basic of the of my code. As you can see, it's 74 lines, not 180 something lines. Uh, but I did learn a lot. It was a really great practice. It was extremely frustrating at times. But overall, I'm very happy because it really exercised my patience muscle and my perseverance muscle. I didn't want to give up. And so I kept plugging along, even though it took me such a long time. And the thing about it too, is there's not a lot of information online about this. So it forces you to actually think outside the box. That was kind of a nice thing. I suppose that free code camp, uh, had generated was it just, there wasn't a lot of help for this. So you really did have to figure it out. Um, it was nice to have help, like I said, from the forum. They didn't necessarily uh, give me the answers, although they did say, hey, this is why this part is failing. At least I knew how or why it was failing, but they didn't say, this is how you fix it. So I, ha I was left to myself to fix it. And I'm very happy that I was able to do that. Anyway, uh, this is the end of this project. I'm moving on to the time calculator. Uh, looking at it, it is going to be, I think, a little difficult. Um, uh, I'm going to write my directions just like I did before of all the thoughts I'm thinking in the beginning that I know are going to change by the end. But it is a nice place to see from the beginning how you progress. So anyway, thanks for viewing and listening to me ramble. And uh, don't forget, visit the blog and you can watch my progress with the time calculator. Uh, that would be awesome. And then at the end of that, I'll probably make another video and do what I did here. And if you like this type of method, uh, let me know in the comments below. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.